Okay, so uh, welcome to Power BI Days. Uh, my name is Ryan Wade, and I will be presenting how to use R and Power BI to create custom visualizations. Uh, before I get started, I would like to thank Jan for putting together this wonderful event. Um, I feel honored to be able to present a, a little bit of what I know to the community and also to be able to uh, take advantage of being able to learn from other people in the community as well. So Jan, I, I appreciate you for putting together putting together this event. Okay, so let's get let's get into this uh, presentation. Okay, so to get started, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Ryan Wade. I am a data analytic consultant. I work for Blue Horseshoe solutions in my day job and also do a lot of community speaking. I've spoken at past summit, uh, at BDPA conference, and also many SQL Saturdays and local meetup groups for R, for Python, and also for Power BI. Uh, my um, technical experience is listed in the uh, list that you see to the right. Uh, currently, I am very geeked about Azure Machine Learning Services. It's a uh, feature that's in preview in Azure, and it uh, is much better than what we used to have with Azure Machine Learning Studio. It makes productionizing your machine learning models much easier. So for any of my data scientist friends out there or data analysts that does machine learning, I highly recommend that you look into that tool. And in addition to that, I'm also very passionate about R. Um, I think R is a great tool for data analysis and um, data science. And if you get an opportunity after seeing this video and after seeing what R can do from a data visualization standpoint in Power BI, hopefully you will get as passionate about R as I am. In addition to speaking, I also do a little blogging. I haven't been as active as I should should be in the past couple of months, but I plan to get more active. On the top session is uh, is where I do blogging um, for Modern Excel, Open Data, you know, alternatives in Power BI. With the session that we're doing today, it it falls under the alternatives in Power BI. I'm giving you another way of creating custom visualizations in Power BI. And in, in addition to that. I will start another blog where, you know, in which I'll call, I showed, I showed you the numbers. And in, in this blog, I will show you, I will make arguments uh, off of different social economic uh, events that's going on, where instead of making anecdotal arguments, I will make arguments based off of data. So I look forward to doing that. I think that would be a very fun and interesting thing to do. Now, I am a true, true geek. Um, in my spare time, you will find me somewhere at a coffee shop or yesterday I was at Tease Me, uh, which is a, if you're in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, it's a coffee shop that's owned by a WNBA uh, basketball former basketball star, Tamika Cashins, and uh, I was there all day preparing for preparing some of my slides for this uh, session and also doing some other work. And if I'm not there, I'd probably be at some local coffee shop geeking it out, tuning in my skills on Power BI, R, or other technical skills. And in addition to that, I'm also an avid strength athlete. I haven't been as active as I was when I was younger. I used to be a uh, American football player. Uh, I'm trying to get back to how the guy is on the on the far left. Uh, look at his form. The guy is a beast. Uh, right now, because I haven't been uh, working out as hard as I should be, I'm more like the guy on the right. So, preferably, with, if I keep on working out hard, I get back to how the guy is on the on the left. <laughs> okay, so now let's get serious. Let's get into what we will cover in this session. Uh, what we will cover in this session is how to create a custom visual, a custom R visualization in Power BI. Now, the visualization that we will create is what is known as a quad chart. A quad chart is a chart that allows you to compare 
things based off of two variables. We as Microsoft professionals are very aware of the chart that I am presenting on the screen right now. This is the magic quadrant chart that is developed by Gartner. Here uh, we see how different BI vendors rank by comparing them based off of their ability to execute and also their completeness of vision. So as you can see, this is a very good way to create that type of visualization. Now, there is a, um, there is a uh, quad chart option from the visualization store, but the visualization uh, in, that, in the store doesn't have the features that we see in this visualization here. Some of the things that makes this visualization uh, unique is that you see labels for each quad chart. So you will see that in the upper left, the name of that quadrant is challengers and then leaders, niche players for the lower left and on the lower right, we have the visionaries. And then there are some subtle things that you see in this visualization. You'll see that there is a, a shading in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. And in the label for our assets, you'll see that we have an arrow there. Now, using native Power BI visualization, it's hard, I think it's impossible to have that part of your of your label for your assets, but you'll see that we can recreate that type of situation using R. Now, in our visualization that we're going to do, we're not going to do the the Gardner chart that we see here. We're going to do a similar chart using data from the NFL. The NFL is, it stands for the National Football League. And the National Football League in the United States of America is a very popular league. Football is one of the main sports here in America. And um, the uh, way that the NFL tests some of the players when they recruiting players to come into the NFL is via a, an event called the Combine. Now, the Combine is an event where you do a lot of different uh, physical activities that test your strength and your speed. So the two more popular uh, tests that's done in the combine is the bench press, which is a proxy for strength, and the 40-yard dash, which is the proxy for speed. So we are going to rank athletes using those two variables. So in order to uh, do that, we will first, I will first show you how to configure your environment to do your analysis. So we, I will show you what you need to do to set up Power BI, you know, how to install R on your machine, and also how to use a tool that uh, I will use that if you become more involved in data science or you, if you want to become a data analyst, I'll show you a tool called the Jupyter Lab. It's a very popular tool for data analysis in the data science community. And if you uh, have aspirations to do machine learning and data science, that is a tool that is a must have for your skill set. So I will present that to you. After we configure our environment, uh, we will go over how to use R and Power Query to do transformations to our data set. Um, <clears throat> that is a powerful feature. And there are three ways that you can use R in Power BI. You can use R to bring data into your data model via Get Data. You can use R as a data step and Power Query, which we will do in this uh, step. And you can also use R to create custom visualizations. We're not going to cover the first one, but we will do the other two, which is in Power Query and also to create a custom visualization. And to create our custom visualization, we would use a arguably the most popular package for data visualization in R. The package is ggplot2. Uh, ggplot2 uses what the author Hadley Wilkham calls called the layered grammar of graphics. Using ggplot2, it makes it relatively easy to create custom visualizations. And given that, um, I think that it's a perfect complement to Power BI when you want to use 
are to create custom visualizations. Okay, so now let's get into some live code. Okay, so let's go over to first thing we want to do is go over how to configure your Power BI in order for you to be able to use R. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go over to Power BI, you want to go over to File, and then you want to go to Options and Settings. From there, you want to go to Options. And here, you will see a session for R scripting. And in this session, you want to configure two things. You want to tell Power BI what version of R you want to use. Now, in, in, this, in the following step, I will show you how to determine what version of R you want to use. You have, uh, if you, you have the ability to have multiple versions of R on your computer, I recommend that you keep it to the minimum. If you have multiple versions of R on your computer, in the past, when I've done that, I ran into issues in Power BI. And to avoid those issues, you can just have one version of R. I know that there's some people in the community, uh, Ginger Grant and Kevin Fiesel, they wrote articles on how to overcome those issues if you have multiple versions of R starting on your machine. But I just recommend you keep it to the minimum. On my machine right now, I have two versions of R. The version of R that's used by the Power BI service and also the version, the version of R that's used by SQL Server R services. By just keeping it down to a minimum, I'm able to avoid problems. And also, you need to tell R what IDE you want to use. This is important um, when you want to start editing your code or debugging your code that you're using to create your visualizations. And you'll see where that comes into play later on in the presentation. So. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is that you want to you want to make sure that you're using the version of R to develop your visualization in the Power BI desktop that's being used in the service. One way to find out what version of R is being used in the service is to go over to this website. And where is the website at? We go here. It's out there. Thought I had a. Let's go to this website. I thought I had it open. Let's go. See if it's here. Okay, let's get to the website. I had a website open. So I just. Go to Google and we type in uh, R and Power BI. Well, R version of R in, in the Power BI service. And we can go here to this website. And you'll see if we scroll down, you'll see all of the packages that are available in the Power BI service. There are over 800 packages that we can use in a service. What I do is if I want to go through this list, instead of going through this list, via this website, what I tend to do is use Power Query and uh, Microsoft Excel to bring this into a table in Microsoft Excel. So if we go to Microsoft Excel, you see that I have all the packages that's, that are available in Power BI listed in this table. And one of the things that one of the pieces of information we can get from this table is the version of R that's being used by the service. And we can get that by filtering this table for the base package. So we filter this out and select the base package. You'll see that we're using 3.4.1. So with that information, I'm able to go Let's find the uh, one second. Let me look for the 
There we are. Yeah, this is the site I was looking for. We can go to the mbrand site. Now the mbrand site, that is a site that's hosted by Microsoft and it, amongst other things, is a repository for the MRO package. Now the MRO package is the enhanced distribution of R. So let me back up a second. With R, you have two places where you can go to download R. You can go to Crane, which is the, the, the historical part, uh, repository for R, or you can go to the MRAN network and you can get the MRO version of R. The only thing that well, what MRO is, it is what is called an enhanced distribution of R. So it's the same version of R that you can find on Crane enhanced with Esther features. And those enhancements are very important in that they can make certain computations much faster via the math libraries that come installed with it. And they also have um, version control via the checkpoint package. So this is a much it's, it's a much better distribution than what you would get from Crane. You get everything that you have in Crane with enhancements. So I recommend that you use this um, repository to get your the version of R that you would use for your Power BI development. Now, if you recall, the version of R that was being used in the service was 3.4 Point one, And you can see that's available here for download. So now if we download this version of R and point our Power BI to this version of R, we can be confident that we're using the same version of R that the service is, is using. And in addition to that, if you want to download R Studio, if you don't already have it on your machine, you can go to rstudio.com and download that information and you will have um, the best uh, IDE for developing your R code. So after we have that set up, now let's go into the visualization. With the visualization, what we want to create is this visualization here. You see that just like we had with the, um, the magic quadrant chart, we have a visualization that have the quadrant, the second and third quadrant straight shaded. We have each quadrant labeled. Um, and in our case, since we're comparing athletes based off of the 40 yard dash time and the bench press, you'll see that we can say that a person who is fast, but you know, not relatively strong, uh, we put them in a fast category. A person who is not, and who, who whose uh, performance in the bench press and the 40 yard dash wasn't that good. We just put them as average. And then the person who is relatively strong, but relatively uh, slow, we put them in the strong category, but the, the athletes that are both fast and strong, they will be put in, the, in this quadrant right here, which we would call beast mode. And one of the nice features that we have here, you'll see that we have the arrows um, added to our labels. And then you also see that we have the uh, uh, what I call dynamic subtitles. And this is something that is super hard to do. What, you know, in Power BI, well, actually you can have dynamic titles, but you cannot do use uh, uh, or create dynamic subtitles using native tools in Power BI. So using R, it makes it easier to do those things. And we'll go over the code that will show you how to do that. So let's get into the actual code. To start off is you if you recall earlier we uh, told Power BI what IDE we wanted to use and the IDE that we set was R Studio. The reason for that is because if you look at the editor that's given to you in Power BI, you'll see that this is not the greatest place in the world to write code. Um, if you need to debug, you would rather be in another IDE versus this little editor here. With this button right here, if you click on this button, what will happen is it will take this code that you see in this small editor and it will take that code and export it out to RStudio. 
along with the data frame that you pass to this to the script. So to see what that looks like, we go here. This is what it looks like. If we were to click that button, we would have all the code that was in the in, in that script passed to our studio along with the data set. And you see that the data set is passed by taking that data set, materializing that data set to disk, and we are give, we are able to access that data set with this line of code here. So once we run this code right here, we have that the data set that was passed to the visual and the data set data frame, and that data will be used to create our custom visualization. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that you can use R and Power BI in two ways. You can use one way uh, as a data step in Power Query, and you can also use it as, you know, to create custom visualization. Actually, there's three ways, and I mentioned earlier that you can use it to bring data into the Power BI data model. One of the things we had to do in the to create the visualization that, that you that you will see um, going forward is that we had to make some transformations to our data using Power Query. So if we go to Power Query, I can show you where that's being done at. <clears throat> and we go to edit queries, you'll see that here we have the ability to call R for within Power Query and do transformations in R and pass the resulting data set back to Power Query. So here, uh, what we're doing is we pass, we pass the data frame that was created up to this step to this R script, and we're doing some transformation to the uh, data set, and then we're going to take that and, and pass it back to um, to Power BI. And as I said earlier, when I'm doing any type of editing, I I'd rather do the editing using R Studio versus the little um, ID the, the, the editors that they give us in Power BI. So. For this example, what I did was I went to our studio and I the data set that was created up to that point, I materialized that data set to disk and I wrote the code here in our studio, got the code functional, and then passed it back to uh, Power BI. And it's to go over what we're doing in that script is we're using two packages in Power BI, I mean in R, called Tidyverse and StringR. Now StringR is actually part of Tidyverse, so I didn't, you know, we didn't have the low StringR here, but Tidyverse is arguably um, one of the best group of packages that you can use for data science. And I think that the Tidyverse group of packages, which uh, most of them are authored by Hadley Wilkham, the same guy who Develop, develop ggplot, um, those packages are great complements to Power BI. I know that there have been a lot of talk recently about the addition to Python to Power BI, and you know I think Python is a great programming language. And I think that there are certain situations where R is the better, better choice, and I think there are certain situations where Python is the better choice. Like for instance, if you're doing Azure Machine Learning Services, I think Python would be a better choice for you. And then right now it's the only one. But when you're talking about using either one of those programming language within the context of Power BI, I think R is the better choice. And one of the main reasons why I think that is because of the Tidyverse group of packages. The Tidyverse group of packages are a group of packages in R that makes doing data science much easier. And if you are looking to go down the path of learning R for data science or for Power BI, I highly recommend that you use Tidyverse. So we load the Tidyverse group of packages into our session, and then we create our data, we load our data set into uh, R. After we do that, you'll see that what we're doing here is something I think is very powerful. And that is, we are 
going to use, we're creating what is called a name character vector. And this name character vector will be used to do conditional replacements. So what, uh, in order to explain this, let's first load both of these variables into memory. And then I will show you where this is being used at. So with the position group, what we're doing here is we're telling R to look use these use the position group name character vector. And the the thing here that is so amazing to me is that we are able to use this name uh, name character vector to do a conditional replacement based off of a regular expression. That is big. Uh, traditionally, if you're using a switch statement in that or using a switch statement in other programming languages to do some type of conditional replacement, you have to use a literal string. And R, you are able to use a pattern match based off of a regular expression. And for those of you who are familiar with regular expression, that is extremely powerful. So with the regular expression that we're able to use here is that for the position group, this is a regular expression that says that I want to replace any instance that starts with an E followed by a DG and ends with an E. That's all that's saying. And if I find a situation where that pattern is found, I want to replace it with defensive line. The same thing here is saying that if I find a string that starts with a C and ends with a B because the carrot is that represents the start position and the dollar sign represents the end position. If I see a situation where that pattern is matched, I want to replace it with a defensive back. That is that's extremely powerful. This is a simple example, but it's imagine about some of the things you can do if you had a more complex situation where you had a pattern that you need to match that had a pattern that can be identified with a regular expression but was not but not with a literal string you can use this type of uh, pattern in order to do that type of conditional replacement so that's all we're doing here and that is being done in power query as a step as a r step within power query so if we go back to Power BI, once this is done, that is passed back to Power BI as a regular table, and then you can do any other transformations that you typically do in Power Query to get your data in, in the shape that it needs to be in for your visualization. So that's an example of using R in Power Query as a data step. So now that we've done that, let's get into the actual visualization that we want to create. The, vi the visualization that we want to create, again, is this one right here, where it's a uh, quad chart that is based off of the performance of the 40-yard dash and the bench press in the NFL combine. So to explain that piece to you, we could do it in our studio, but instead of doing that, we would use another tool called the Jupyter Notebook. So let's go to the Jupyter Notebook. This is what is called the Jupyter Notebook. Now, in my GitHub repository, I will have detailed information on how to install this. And, and it's very simple. You, you know, in a nutshell, you go to uh, uh, Continue An Analytics website to download uh, a distribution of Python called Anaconda. And when you download that distribution, the Jupyter Lab comes part of that installation after you install the Anaconda. So it's a pretty straightforward process. And to open the Jupyter Lab, it's pretty straightforward as well. So here is just some basic documentation about the uh, Jupyter Lab and, and how to install it. This will be available in my uh, GitHub site. And you also have a list of, uh, you have a list of websites that you can go to to get more information on how to use the Jupyter Notebook. This is a excellent tool to do data science in because it's, it's, it's um, perfect for creating what is known as reproduce, reproducible research or reproducible analysis and data science. The notebook is perfect for that. So I highly recommend that you look into this feature. So starting off, we just go over some of the um, 
different packages that we're going to use in creating our visualization and little and some description about the package. For the sake of time, we're not going to go over everything that's um, that you see here, but the code, you know, the, the comments that I put into the Jupyter Notebook is pretty verbose. So if you want to go back and read these comments, you can in order to find out more information. Now, when I create a custom visualization in R, I basically use this template right here. And that is a template where I check the data set or the data frame that's being passed to my custom visual. And I make sure that the data set have the minimum requirements that I need to create my visualization. If it does, then the code that is needed for my visualization is put in this block here. If it doesn't meet the minimum requirement for my visualization, I return an empty chart or empty graph using this code down here. So to create the visualization that we have for this uh, session, the custom quad chart, the first thing we need to do is load in our packages into um, our, our session. Once we load in those packages, we need to fetch our data set and we need to put it into a data frame that is named data set because that's the same name that's being used by Power BI. So once we do that, you'll see what our data set looks like. Uh, we have um, the player, um, the year of the combine, the position that we are analyzing, and also the number of reps they did for the bench press and the number of reps they did for the, or the, the time they have for the 40 yard dash. Now here, one of the nice things about using R to create a custom visualization is that if the data set that you're passing to your data frame, if, if it's not in the perfect shape that you need it to be in for your visualization, you can do additional transformations in your R script in order to get your data set in the right shape. So in our situation, we have uh, to make sure that the athlete had both a 40 yard time and also have performed a bench press. If they didn't do both of those, then it would be impossible to plot them on our quad chart. So we only include the athlete that met both of those criteria in our data set. To do that, we use dplyr and the tidyverse package to to subset our data to make sure that it is it include records that where the 40 yard dash is not equal to zero and also the number of bench press reps is not equal to zero. After we do that, we need to make sure that our bench press reps and our 40 yard dash time is on the same scale. Now, the bench press reps and the 40 yard dash time, obviously starting off, they not because the bench press reps are integers that represents the number of reps that the athlete perform. And the uh, 40 yard uh, dash time is like a continuous number that represents their speed. So in order to get them on the same scale, if we had to rely on Power Query, that would be a very involved calculated field in Power Query. It'd be extremely hard to do. But in R, because R is a language that's written by statisticians for statisticians and have been doing this type of task for many years since the early 90s, there are functions in R that would do that calculation for us and it would abstract all of the uh, complicated math or the evolved math that would be needed to do that. So to get our 40 yard dash time and our bench press rep, on the same scale, we can do that with a function call in R. You see here that we're calling the function from the scale package called rescale, and it is taking the a 40 yard dash time and also our bench press reps, and it's putting them on a scale from negative 10 to positive 10. Once, it, once that is done, we can use those values for the quad chart. So we run that code here. And then as we go down, 
now we're going to start building our visualization. And for those of you that are here in America uh, that are, I'll say, 38, 40 plus years old, you are uh, well aware of who this guy is. This guy is uh, Bob Ross. He is a famous American painter, and he was excellent at you know creating uh, paintings that he would start with a blank canvas and he would, you know, he would draw a beautiful scenery and, you know, often some beautiful landscape and he would just add elements on top of elements on top of elements on his visualization on its paint until it went from a blank canvas to some amazing. That is what ggplot allows you to do. It allows you to start with a blank canvas and add layers on top of layers on top of layers on that canvas until you come up with a custom visualization that um, that does exactly what you need it to do, that visualizes exactly what you want it to visualize. So we're going to go through that process of building a custom visualization using ggplot. So in this block of code here, what we're doing is we are defining our data set that we're going to use for our visualization. And we also are describing what our aesthetics are going to be in our visualization. So with aesthetics, we tell you plot what we're going to use on our X axis and, and also what variable we're going to use on our Y axis. And then another thing that's, that's uh, pretty powerful about ggplot is you can define many other aesthetics. Like in our, in our situation, we will have another aesthetic of position. For those of you that are not familiar with American football, in American football, you have different categories of positions. Like one position is the offensive line. On the offensive line, you have three types of offensive linemen. You have an offensive center, you have an offensive guard, and you have an offensive uh, uh, tackle. So if we were looking at offensive line, we can say we can easily represent on our chart which of the athletes are is a offensive center, which are offensive tackles, and which are offensive guards. And we can do that with color coding. And that can be defined using our color aesthetic. So after we do that, we tell ggplot <clears throat> what type of plot we want to use to uh, visualize our data. In this, in this situation, we want to use a point, uh, a point uh, a chart, which is similar to a scatter plot. Now, with this, uh, we are able to take it further and say, OK, we just have a bunch of points on there. If we can't tell the person who's uh, looking at the graphic what those points represent is pretty meaningless. So it's easy for us to add labels to the chart by using the G, the geom underscore label underscore, underscore repel. And what that does is it allows us to label each one of these points. But in addition to that, the, re, the, the repel portion of this, uh, the name of this particular geom allows us to say that if we have a situation like we have here, where we have two points that are close together, the repel argument will move the labels over enough to where they are readable. So that's we don't have a program that that is automatically done for us using uh, the ggplot package and the geo underscore label underscore repel function within ggplot. And then over here in this line of code, we're able to define or draw a vertical line that goes through our y-intercept at zero, that has a y-intercept of zero, and also a horizontal line that has an s-intercept of zero. And you can see that here. So at this point, we have pretty much the basis of our scatter plot. I mean, not scatter plot, our quad chart. You see, we're able to create a custom visualization in our, create this quad chart with one, two, three, four, five lines of code. Now, if we were trying to, if we were had to use another program language to do this, the amount of code that will be required to do that would be much more verbose than what we see here. We are able to develop 
this chart, which is pretty functional at this point, with a minimum amount of code. I think that is extremely powerful. But is this production ready? No, it's not. There are some things that we need to do in order to get this thing production ready. One of those things is we need to get rid of the background that we see right here, and then we need to add a different shade to the second and third quadrant. We need to do some things to our our uh, our assets, our S assets, and our Y assets, and then there's, we need to add those custom chart titles as well. So let's get to that point. To that part of the code so to start off what we will do is we will create the rectangular borders that we need for our quadrant labels and that is done using this code right here so we run this code you'll see that we have those um the, the rectangles built that will warehouse the labels for each quadrant we're able to do that with minimum code. It took us four lines of code to add that. Pretty straightforward. And you look at the code, very human readable. If I was to give this code to any one of you all, you are a very smart people. You can look at it and you can say, okay, he's using the annotate function. And you can see, okay, he's drawing a rectangle. And the, the position of that rectangle is here. I mean, it's very human readable. And he is filling that rectangle with this color here very human readable and um very easy to share this code with someone else and they can easily tell what you're trying to do that is one of the things that make the ggplot package so great so now i want to add label i mean actual text to those labels i can do that here also using the annotate function so we run this block of code here and you'll see that now we have our labels in are um, in the rectangles that we defined earlier. Now we're in GG. I mean, we're in uh, Jupyter, a Jupyter notebook right now. So the way the visualization is rendering in the Jupyter notebook is a not is not exactly how it will render in Power BI. It will render in Power BI much better. But for the sake of going through the uh, different steps to create the visualization, we will uh, use Jupyter notebook. But just know that it would render much better in Power BI. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of all that background information that we uh, don't want to have in our visualization. Now, for um, those of you that are Christians on the uh, call, uh, common saying in the Christian uh, community is a lot of times before somebody is about to do something, they will say, "What would Jesus do?" Well, and in the data visualization world, people who are data viz experts, they are they subscribe to two people, one or two people, Edward Tufte and Stephen Few. Those are two of the most well-known data visualization experts out there. So when you're creating your data viz and and ggplot, you can ask the question: What would Edward Tufte do? And you can get that response by using a theme from Edward Turkey called the theme underscore Tuffy theme that's available in the themes package from R. So just by using this function, you can apply rules that were developed by Edward Tuffy to your visualization. And one of the things that Edward Tuffy is real big on is he is real big on how you use your white space in your visualization. A lot of times as novice uh, data visualization professionals, many times we will go through and we will create all kinds of clutter in our chart that's not giving real meaning to our visualization. And it'd be unnecessary use of white space. Well, when with Edward Tuffy and also Stephen Few, if you're gonna put something on your visualization, it should have meaning. Mean it. it shouldn't be about trying to make your visualization uh, instead of be just pretty, pretty for no reason. You want to do anything that you do to your visualization, you want it to have meaning and you want it to be helping telling the story that you're trying to give to the end users of your visualization. So Edward Tuffy, he takes out unnecessarily ink on your, 
on your visualization so that anything is on there is meaningful. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add the shades to the second and third quadrant using this code here. Now, I'm not going to go deep into the code, but you all can look at the code and can easily tell what the code is doing. This code, the ggplot code is very human readable. So you'll see, I hope it's rendered well on your screen, you'll see that there is a shade to our second quadrant and also a shade to the third quadrant. Uh, now, up to this point, we have the basic of the R visualization. So if we were to take that code and put it into Power BI, uh, and we had to refactor a little bit because you saw that in, in GG, I mean, in, in the Jupyter Notebook, we did everything in, in steps, whereas you do all in one pass in the R script. So the, the version of the script that did all that in one pass is what you see down here. And this is what would be created. So right now we got something very basic and we can easily go through if I want to see what the runner bats look like in two, uh, 2015. Who were the runner bats in that year and how they played out? You'll see that, you know, a lot of the runner bats were fast, wasn't that many strong ones. Uh, and the two, uh, the, the two that were considered strong were full bats. That's the position I played when I played football. And those are typically the bigger running bats, and they're known for blocking. And you see that we're able to identify who were full bats of the running bats using the red uh, color. And you, you can see that, you know, they represent full bats from looking at your, you know, at the, um, you know, looking here. And then you can also see how the other running bats played out. But we don't have the other pieces of the chart yet on the on our visualization. Now, if we go to the final version over here, you'll see that not only do we have that information, but we have the uh, the arrow on our speed and also on our strength. And in addition to that, you'll see that we have these dynamic subtitles. This is calculated at runtime. If I was to go to another year here, you'll see that our subtitles will recalculate based off of the information that was uh, that that you know for that given year so you'll see who ran who did the best on the bench press who did it worse on the bench press the same thing with the 40 yard dash and you also see the athletes that didn't do either the uh, 40 yard dash or the bench press so this is a information rich dashboard and this imagine in business if we were, you know, doing this with the master quadrant chart, if, you know, we gave the end user more information than just was in that quad chart. We can have uh, dynamic uh, subtitles that can give the users more information about that particular visualization. Unfortunately, what we can do now in the service is just right here. What we see with this, uh, the additions of the Subtitles, currently, they're not working in the Power BI service. I'm talking to the uh, some to some of the people on the product team at Microsoft right now, and, and I'm going to give a blog post on, or I'm going to create a blog post of what we can do in order to circumvent that uh, limitation right now and also what the Microsoft team is doing in order to correct that information but right or correct that issue but right now that's a limitation of using R in the service. Some of the features that work in the desktop do not work in the service. So even given that I'm thinking that the the um, team at Microsoft are going to work to improve this. So now what we can do we can go back to our our Jupyter Notebook, and we can go over how to develop those dynamic portions of our visualization, and hopefully the Microsoft team will get that working on their end. So to start off, we will just look at our data set again, and we'll see that in our data set, we have information that we can use to create dynamic subtitles, um, and also, and in, in, in more additional dynamic information, just using the data that we have in our data set. So starting off, the first thing we do is here, and we're going to go through this code real quick. And if you want to go back and you want to play with this code, all this information will be available on the GitHub site. So here you're seeing that I was able to use a hack 
in R. And the hat that I used in R was the B quote function. Now the B quote function, what the real purpose of the B quote function is, it, is that it is used in R to allow you to combine regular test information with mathematical notation. So if you wanted to do a uh, uh, create a chart title, for instance, of you know that that included some type of math mathematical equation, you are able to do so using the B quote function. But here, what I use it uh, for was to create a a uh, a label that had the name of the asses that I needed for my chart, along with an arrow. So you'll see that now we have this arrow, and that arrow, I was able to get that arrow by using this symbol right here that we have defined here. That symbol returns an arrow in the B quote function. So the next thing I was wanted to do, and I'm going to go through this you know, relatively quickly, and you can go back and look at the GitHub site, is I wanted to develop those dynamic uh, titles. And we can do so using the information that we have in our data frame. So starting off it would be this is the dynamic chart title. I want the end user to know that they are selecting the, the chart that they selected. I want them to know the year, and I also want them to know the position that they're looking at. And you see that is dynamically created based off of the data frame that we have and uh, that was passed to the visualization. And then going through this line of code right here, I'm creating these dynamic subtitles. So we're going to go through this relatively quickly, but the first line of code that, uh, or the first code cell that we uh, are um, executing, that we're executing, is a code that will give us the list of athletes that falls in the category that we're building a subtitle for. So in this situation, we are building a subtitle for the athletes that didn't run the 40 yard dash. And these are the two athletes that didn't do so. And from here, we're able to, okay, we did that already. So let's run through this. So now we're here, we're able to use a function in, in R called the collapse, I mean the pace function. And one of the arguments in the uh, pace function is the collapse that allows us to take a character vector that was produced right here and collapse that onto one string that is delimited with a comma. So after we run this code, then you'll see that we have a string that represents the two athletes that we that, that did the run a 40 yard dash. In addition to that, you'll see another thing that we want to do is we want to make this read more naturally. So if we, uh, in order to do that, if we have multiple athletes in there, I mean, in our string, we would like the, the last athlete to, instead of having just a comma, have a comma and a, and a word and, which would make it more readable. So in this situation, if we run this code, you'll see that it now has a comma and then you know, and so we had three athletes that made more sense, but here we only have two because we're doing all this programmatically. If we want to say that in a situation where there's only two athletes, I want you to not use a, you know, a comma. I just want you to use an and we can programmatically do this. And you can see the amount of code that will be required to do that would be minimum. And then to further build out the string, what we want to do is we want to and what you know what information do we, want, do we want to share about those athletes so here we are able to do so with um this line of code right here using the pace zero function which pace the string did not run the 40 yard dash so now we have that subtitle built out braston and anthony miller did not run the 40 yard dash that's a dynamically built subtitle and we're going to do that and you know for every category that an athlete can be in in our visualization and a nice thing about that is not only can we do that with R, we can have it set up to where um, if there's no athlete that falls in that category we can programmatically tell ggplot whether we want to show that subtitle or not so here what we're doing is we're doing the same thing for the other categories 
and we you already explained it in the previous session, so we need to go over that again. So that's ran. So here we have all our subtitles. We can print those out. Okay. And then go here. And then one of the things we're doing here, we're doing it, we're doing it for the uh, the athletes that didn't perform well on the bench. So we got we're building out the subtitle for the worst. The, the athletes that did worse in the bench and the ones that did the best in the bench here. And again, uh, the code that we're uh, using, you'll see that we're able to do things in a succinct way using R that if we had to do some of these same things in Power BI using Power Query and M, it would be super hard to do. So now we're doing it for the worst 40 yard dash, doing all these out, we're going through this relatively quickly for the sake of time. And do it for the best 40. And again, this is uh, using dplyr and a, a, a technique called uh, chaining. You, you see that we're able to build this stuff out with succinct code. Now, the last thing we're doing is with this block of code here, we're performing a test to see, you know, are there any athletes in that category? If there are, we will show that sub, you know, title. If there are not, we will not show that subtitle. So we run that, you know, here, and then we go here in the chart source. This is what we can use for our caption. And you'll see that in our chart when we display it. So here is what our chart looked like before we did all of our customizations. We, we can display that out, and you'll see that, you know, what we had before. You saw this chart earlier. This is what it looks like after we add those dynamic elements to our chart. Let's scroll down. Give a couple. Now you'll see it's not rendering like it will in Power BI, but you'll see that uh, we have our dynamic subtitles, we have our dynamic chart title, and we also have our caption down here that tells us tell the user where we got the information from. And the last thing we want to do is we want to uh, move, you know, make some last minute cosmetic changes. We want to move are labeled down to the corners like it is in the magic quadrant chart and we do that using the code down here where we're uh repositioning our, our labels and then we add a border around our chart and we uh change some fonts so we run this code here you see what that output looks like scroll down and again this doesn't win the rail but we go to power bi you see that if, how it renders here. you see that we have our dynamic subtitles listed where we showing who did the best and worst in the bench press, who did the best and worst in the 40 yard dash, and what athletes didn't uh, perform either event. And in addition to that, one of the things that you, that you lose when you create custom visualization in R using a uh, I mean, you, uh, in, visual, in Power BI using R, one of the things you, you, you lose is you lose interactivity with the chart. But one of the things I do to, to overcome that is I create what I call proxy um, visualization that will act on behalf of my R visual. So in this case, if I wanted to do some type of drill through, I can do that using this as a proxy. And if I right click on this and do drill through and go into player info that perform both events, I can do so click on player, player information, and I can get that detailed information for those players, uh, even though I don't have that actual interactivity with the R visual. Now, I do get interactivity with all the filters outside of my R visuals. Those filters propagate to my R visual, but I can't do any backward proper, uh, 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 filtering, uh, meaning that I, I can't select anything in my R visual to filter other visuals within my uh, uh, my report or dashboard. So again, the uh, the, the last piece, the, the part in the final version, this is the, the dynamic uh, subtitles. They do not uh, render well in the service as of now. I've been talking to the product team. That is something that they are working on correcting. But as of now, uh, the dynamic features do not work. But the features that we see here, where we're able to create the, the basis of a quad chart, those features do work in the uh, service.
Are there any questions? Not at the moment. Um, yeah, maybe people will type some questions right now. Okay, I'm getting some things coming in. Uh, George is saying thanks for an interesting uh, presentation, an opinion I, I share because this went way deeper than I uh, even expected it would go. So thank you very much, Ryan. That uh, was interesting indeed. Um, George has been trying to incorporate R into Power BI and he says this is very motivational and I fully agree with that. You you did well. It's a, a talk that actually belongs at the past summit, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Good work. Okay. Uh, thanks. Well, you know, I, I understand I threw a lot. One of the things I didn't want to do, and I hope I didn't overwhelm, but one of the things I didn't want to do is do something so basic that wouldn't excite you. Uh, you know, because there, there's extreme power in uh, using our custom viz and uh, Power BI. So with that in mind, I have in my GitHub repository, which I will share with everyone, detailed documentation on what I cover here, and as well as the uh, the Jupyter notebook that I use in this session. That's on my GitHub site, so you can go through and walk through all of the examples that I went through in this session. Yeah, and you can you can get, you can analyze the code yourself, and and I I was pretty uh, verbose with my documentation, so the I, I think that uh, there are enough information to describe what I'm doing, but if you have questions, you can reach out to me. Okay, cool. So uh, people are also asking for uh, the slides. Um, I'm telling people that the recording will be put on uh, recordings.powerbydays.com, uh, which is a link to our YouTube channel, and I'll uh, post a. Uh, the slides, uh, well, the couple of slides you had, together with the link to your GitHub, at uh, together with all the rest of the content for this uh, Power BI days. Okay. okay. And last but not least, is I like the, you know, uh, some books that I recommend. The book the, uh, that I recommend, if you're getting, if you're new to R, the best introduction I think you can have is this book right here, R for Data Science. There is a free version of this book that's available online, and you can also buy, you know, the book in paperback. Once you get get to that book, you have a very good understanding of the tidyverse group of packages that are perfect complements to Power BI. After that, if you want to get a more deep deep dive with uh, creating R biz, I recommend the book GGplot2. And the Python for data analysis, if you want to do anything Python with Power BI, this is a good start for teaching you how to do data wrangling using Python. And everybody here pretty much know about the guys in SQL BI uh, and, and M is for Data Monkey. For those of you who are doing any Power BI development, I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with those two books. Yeah. This is a classic, by the way, the R for Data Science book is, as well. Yeah. So... Okay, cool. Thank you very much uh, for your time, for the effort, and I uh, hope to see you next time. All right, thanks a lot. I uh, hope, uh, hope the um, people who came to the session got what they wanted, and if you need to reach out to me, if you have any questions, just let me know. I will do so. Thank you. Thank you.